What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Life Coach Lessons from. My name's Sachin. I'm a life coach, and today we're talking about Game of Thrones, which is one of my favorite things to talk about when I coach people, and I need to make、uh, metaphors and analogies that stick. So in this series, I break down the stuff that I consume for entertainment, and I give you the life coaching lessons that I get from it, and I give to my clients. Game of Thrones, so so much to talk about. Oh my god, Sansa Stark is the first person we're going to talk about. Now they, they call her Cersei, calls her Little Dove. By the way, yeah, massive spoilers. If you haven't watched Game of Thrones, ah, first of all, yeah, if you ain't watched Game of Thrones, I don't know what you're doing with your life. It was a worldwide phenomenon. Why haven't you watched it yet? Go watch Game of Thrones. It'll take you a couple months, then come back and watch this.、Uh, if you don't give a shit about spoilers, carry on. Sansa Stark starts out as like the、um, you know the, the protected, pampered princess kind of character, and she's very naive. She's very sheltered.、Um, she's growing up with this romanticized idea of oh, I'm going to marry the the king, and we're going to have little princes and princesses together. And she very, very quickly gets a massive reality check, and. The the life that unfolds for her,、uh, it shows her that it's not actually going to be like that for her. Sansa's story arc to me shows her as like the loss of innocence. So she started off as this like innocent, naive little kid, as we all do. Then life happens, and she realizes just how bad things can get. She starts getting tortured by Joffrey. She dad, she watches her dad getting killed. So many things happen, right? If you know the story, you know the story. Now. Why? What do I take from this? How do I talk to people about this? That's in a helpful way with coaching. Well, Sansa is like she's very naive, right? And naivety is not、um, is not generally looked at as a good thing.、Um, you could also call it innocence, lack of experience, whatever you want to call it. It's really powerful to to have that、um, innocence in you, but it can be manipulated. And innocence, in my opinion, is is a great thing. But it leaves us susceptible to manipulation and、uh, heartache. And、um, what happens with Sansa is that she's so terrified of stepping away from the, the conventional norm that it gets worse and worse and worse until she has to choose freedom for herself. Now that requires going against everything she's been she thought to be true from when she was a young kid. And that's what I want to start with, right? There's stuff that we all know is bullshit that we've chosen to follow, or maybe we're still continuing to choose it. I know plenty of examples of this. I've helped loads of people come away from their cultural conditioning bullshit, which has told them, right, you're a woman and you look like this, and you come from this race of people, so that means you're not allowed to get an education. You are only trained to be a housewife, and fuck you if you want to do anything else. It's kind of similar to Sansa Stark. She's just been trained to be the, the king's wife. And that's all she's wanted. And when she quickly realised that that's not really how it's going to go down, then she started having to venture outside of what she's already always known. And that is fucking terrifying for her, and it has been for many people as well. It was hard for me too. I had to leave behind all of this stuff that I thought was true. My parents told me it was true. The elders in our society told me, in my, in my culture told me it's true. Who am I to question it? And that's the, the the arc that I see Sansa going down. It's like she's questioning all of this stuff that's hurting her, but that's all she's known, and she's too scared to do anything about it until she stops being so scared. Because people change from inspiration or desperation. Unfortunately, for most people, it's going to be desperation, and that's what it was for her. Getting tortured by Joffrey, humiliated by、um, having to marry、uh, Tyrion. Um, Ramsay Bolton's torturing her. People are trying to take the North from her. She's been put into this position of leadership and power after being subjected to, tre- to subjected to tremendous evil in the past, and that is the only reason why she's an appropriate leader. That's the only reason why she can lead effectively. So I've talked to women in their fifties who are who've left the cultural conditioning behind, 
and they're judging themselves for things that they did whilst they were under that illusion. And I've, I've explained it to them, look, it makes you a better leader. You're better able to guide your children into the future that you want for them and they want for them because you went through that, because you went through the torture, you went through the humiliation and you went through the tremendous evil that was subjected to, that you were subjected to. This, is, this isn't about like trying to glorify your struggle, but it's really just about taking the good that can come with these things because it's going to happen. Game of Thrones is full of fucked up shit that happens to people and we watch how it, what it does to them. So that's a little bit about Sansa. Catelyn Stark, she shows me what it means to, to have loyalty to a cause, but also there's a part where she frees Jaime Lannister. And, you know, people are up in arms about it. There's a whole, like, you know, rebellion inside this the Stark army. And they say something like, the softness of the heart of a woman let you down, something like that. And I think it's sad because... Catelyn Stark is showing us what it means to have tremendous loyalty and ferocity, but also to have a kind heart. And in the world of Game of Thrones, that's just not appreciated. What happened as a result of her not killing Jaime Lannister is later on, yeah, it was good for them. Like they, they could have leveraged it in a, if they had gone about things in a different way. But the whole army took it as like, no, you were wrong. Fuck you. And now we don't have as much faith in your son, Rob Stark. Um she she really like stood by the kids she did her best when ned got killed she did her very best to rally the troops shall we say but it was hard for her and there's a lot of single parents out there who are in a similar situation as uh, catelyn stark and she's surrounded by people who are trying to, to destroy her she's also surrounded by people who want the best for her and they're on her side and this is what i say to people in that situation when i talk to them um, it's not about focusing on what you don't have because Catelyn Stark at one point she's trying desperately to get back what she doesn't have but instead if she puts her focus on what she does have there's tremendous force behind her she's got Rob Stark you know there's, there's a lot going for her things might have looked different and this is a great lesson in if what you appreciate multiplies I love that phrase um, Ned Stark okay big big character um lessons that we can get from Ned Stark are so many but one that I find particularly heartbreaking is that living your life with honor doesn't always mean you it doesn't always mean that you will get the benefits that you want from that so living with honor means dying by honor too that's what Ned Stark did until the very end he had, he chose to compromise his honor he chose to proclaim Joffrey as the rightful king Otherwise, if he didn't, his children would be killed. And he did, He wasn't going to do it. He chose to take a stand for his real beliefs and say, fuck that guy. He's not the real king, this and that, whatever. He chose to take a stand for what he really believes in. And when the, when the consequences of that choice came to him, then he had to face them. The consequences were, hey, look, if you carry on living like this, if you carry on saying the things you're saying, we're going to kill your family. Okay, well, I'm going to put the honor to the side for a minute and I'm going to I'm going to bend the knee, literally and figuratively, so that my family is not in danger. And this is what I would say to anyone else who who has strong morals that they stand by. I do too. I'm a, I've got very, very militant beliefs about a lot of things. And one of those things is lying. I really don't get down with that. And a bunch of other shit that I just, um, I've got very militant. But like anyone who hits women or kids, yeah, I've got an issue with you. <laughs> um, I've got an issue with like people um, manipulating people into buying stuff. I've got an issue with gambling as an industry. The healthcare should not be an industry. We're going to do a video on that at some point. Uh, I've got an issue with a bunch of these things. But it, if I'm going to choose to have those beliefs... I've got to be prepared to cho to also choose to accept what comes with them. So I have very strong beliefs, like I just said, about gambling and alcohol. Very, very dangerous drug, alcohol, yeah? If, I, if I'm rolling like that in life, I've got to be prepared for what comes with that. Some people who I love drink alcohol. If I have those views about it, I've got to be prepared to face my judgments of those people. And they are just judgments of I hold of myself. So 
I want uh, to point to, to point in the direction of what Ned Stark's lifestyle creates for him. Like we talked about in the Pop Smoke video, Ned Stark is known as a man of honor, a man of his word, uh, fair, just, a great fighter, all these things. And um, that is really put to the test, really, really put to the test when things start to crumble. And as soon as they do and the Lannisters start to take over and whatever, he chooses to live with honor. He chooses to do the right thing, but it gets very difficult for him. And in a world of lies, those who are telling the truth are, are made out to be like they're crazy. Unfortunately, that's kind of what was happening to Ned Stark. And right up until his death, you know, um, he, try, he tried to be legit. You know, he tried to live authentically to what he believes didn't really work out for him. It's a very sad story, but this happens all the fucking time. People are wrongfully imprisoned because they don't talk shit about people. They're not willing to um, meet fire with fire. So they spend time in prison that they shouldn't have spent time in prison for. Um, they, they are, the world is uh, constantly in, in turmoil. Uh, people do stuff to each other. And those who live by their word and by honor, they're not always rewarded for it. So this is a huge lesson that I take from this. It's like, all right, I want to be a man of my word. I want to be a man of integrity. I want to walk my talk. There's a lot of shit that's going to come with that. Just because other people are talking shit online, it's easier to do that than it is to deep dive in. Um, it's easier to believe the shit that people are st saying about me than it is to deep dive into my story and understand me. Doesn't mean that I should judge those people for doing it. It means this is what I'm signing up for if I'm going to say the stuff that I truly believe in. So... We'll leave it there for today. There's a bunch of other Game of Thrones characters we're going to talk about. I can't wait. I'm very excited. I hope you are too. And I would love to hear what life coaching lessons you got from Sansa, Catelyn, and Ned Stark. Now, like I said, we'll move on to the other characters at some point, but let's start with these guys. What do you get from their life coaching? Um, what do you get from their journey that you could take as lessons for your own? What do you take from their story that you, you could start to learn from and integrate into your life? I'd love to hear it. Put it in the comment section. If you like this video, please give it a like. Subscribe if you want more videos like this. We do two series, a couple of different things on this channel. We've got life coach lessons from, breaking down entertainment stuff that I watch and play and listen to, whatever, and give you the life coach lessons from it. And we also got life coach reacts, where I look at stuff that's going on in the world and give you my take on it. Hope you enjoyed today's video. See you in the next one. Peace.